Hello everyone, my name is Karan Masru. Welcome to this video. So in this video, we are going to look at the solution of the problem minimum deletions. First of all, let us start by understanding the question. What does question say? It says that given a string of capital S as input, your task is to write a program to delete the minimum number of characters from the string so that the resultant string is a palindrome. So uh, we are given a string capital S and we need to tell how many minimum characters we need to delete from it such that the resulting uh, string is a palindrome. The order of characters in the string should be maintained. So what does that say? That let's say we have a string of length 10. Suppose I delete the character at the second position, then the uh, order should not be changed. So first, third, fourth, fifth, up to tenth character should be in their place only. We just delete the second character from its position and one and third character will come nearby. Okay. Uh, so let us look at this example A, E, B, C, B, D, A. So here we need to delete two characters that is E and D. So if I delete E and D, my resultant string would be A, B, C, B, A, which is a palindrome. Okay. Uh, this is geeks for geeks. Here we need to delete eight characters. You can look at the explanation. You don't need to read input or print anything. Your task is to complete the function minimum number of deletions which take the string capital S as inputs and returns the minimum number of deletions required to convert capital S into palindrome. The expected time complexity is S square. The S modulus S is the length of the string and expected auxiliary space is also S square and the constraints are given here. So now if we think about solving this problem, so this is the string right now what we were asked, we need to tell the minimum number of characters to be deleted such that the resultant string, the resultant string is a palindrome, right? This is what they have asked in the question. Okay. Now, so can I say if I find the maximum length palindrome subsequence possible from the given string s, then n minus maximum possible length palindrome of a subsequence would be my answer. Okay, understand this clearly. What I'm trying to say, we need to delete the minimum number of characters to get the resultant string, string as palindrome. Okay, so what does su definition of subsequence say? Subsequence is nothing but when we delete some characters from a given string, the resultant characters when their order is not changed is a subsequence, right? So what I'm saying, if I find the maximum length palindromic subsequence, then uh, n minus maximum length palindromic subsequence would be the characters which I need to delete, right? So my answer would be, I can say n minus maximum length palindromic subsequence. This would give my answer, right? Okay. Now, how will we get maximum length where n is the length of the original string, okay? n is length of string capital S, okay? Now, how will we get maximum length palindromic subsequence? So, what I can do is, I can, this string is S, okay? I can take another string S1 in which I will store the reverse of S, okay? So, S is the given string, S1 will be nothing but reverse of S, Reverse means uh, starting from end to start, it will be. So your S1 would be, uh, it would be A, D, B, C, B, E, A. Okay. So this is my S, this is my S1. I want to find maximum length palindromic subsequence. Okay. What is palindrome? Palindrome is a string which reads the same from starting to end or from ending to start. Right. So what I have done, this is my original string. This is my reverse string. If I find the longest common subsequence between S and S1, then that would be maximum length palindromic subsequence. Are you getting my point? If I find longest common subsequence between S and S1, this would be nothing but maximum length palindromic subsequence. Why? Because S1 is reverse of S. Palindrome means a string which reads the same st from starting to end or from ending to start. So if I reverse S and if I find the longest common subsequence between S and S1, S1 is reverse of S. So the longest common subsequence will be nothing but a palindrome, right? Uh, between S and S1, right? So longest common subsequence means, uh, longest means the length is maximum, common means the character are same and subsequence means subsequence, okay? So if I write here, so let's say this is S, uh, this is S1, what is S? It is A. E, uh, B, 
C B D A, right? So, what is the longest common subsequence between uh, S1 and S? It is longest common subsequence is A. This is A. Uh, then B C B B C B. So B C B and then A. Then A. Okay. So the longest common subsequence between S and S1 is this, right? And it is a palindrome. It should be a palindrome. Why? Because S1 is reverse of S. And palindrome means a string which reads the same from starting to end and from end to start. So the common subsequence between S and S1 would be a palindrome. So, and this is the longest common palindrome. Its length is 5. What is So this is also the longest palindromic subsequence which I can get. Uh, so the maximum length here is 5. What is the value of n? n is 3, 3, 6 and 7. So n is 7. So 7 minus 5 is 2. I need to delete two characters that are e and d which are not a part of longest common subsequence so now my task is to find the length of longest common subsequence between s and s1 so how can i do that the most brute force approach is to call a recursive function right so what i can say i can call a function which says give me the length of the longest common subsequence between first string and second string considering all the n characters of first string and considering all the n characters of the second string now one by one i'll uh, think whether to pick the nth character or not okay so here let's say let's say the nth character match in s1 and s2 so considering them in the subsequence would be the best case for us so what i can say my longest or let me call this longest common subsequence so my longest common subsequence among n minus 1 characters of both string plus 1 would be my answer if the nth character of both the strings match then longest common subsequence considering the first n characters of s and considering the first n characters of s1 is equals to longest common subsequence considering first n minus 1 characters of s and n minus 1 characters of s1 plus 1 why because nth character are same in both of them so i have taken in them uh, if the nth character are same that is s of n is equals to s of n1 I have taken them into my longest common subsequence. I have considered them in my answer. Okay. So that's why I have plus one here. Now let's say n minus one character do not match in both of them. So I have two choices. This would be longest common subsequence of n minus one characters of the first string and n minus two characters of the second string or longest common subsequence of n minus two characters of the first string and n minus one characters of the second string. Okay. I'll neglect one character either from the first string or from the second string and the maximum of both of this will be given to LCS n minus 1 n minus 1 okay so longest common subsequence of n minus 1 n minus 1 is max of longest common subsequence uh, n minus 1 n minus 2 comma longest common subsequence n minus 2 n minus 1 okay uh, now let's say again uh, these two characters do not match n minus one character and n minus two character. So again I have two choices longest common subsequence among n minus two characters of the first string and n minus two characters of the second string or longest common subsequence among n minus one characters of the first string and n minus three characters of the second string and the max of these two will be my answer for this. Similarly, here I have two choices. Suppose let's say these two characters do not match. That is S of n minus 2 is not equal to S of n minus 1. Okay. So again, I have two choices either to neglect the last character of the second string. So longest common subsequence of n minus 2 characters from first string and n minus 2 characters from second string or longest common subsequence from n minus uh, three characters from first string and n minus one characters from second string and the max of these two would be my answer for this okay and so on i'll keep on calling the recursion until one of them becomes zero okay uh, because if one string uh, length is zero so the answer is zero there we will return zero okay longest common subsequence of zero comma m or uh, is equals to longest common subsequence of k comma zero which is equal to zero because if one string is empty it cannot have any characters to participate in longest common subsequence so we will call this recursive function and we will get our answer right now this the time complexity of this recursion will be exponential because we will try and generate all the test all the cases right so we need to think of something more efficient 
Now the time complexity of this is uh, exponential and we want to convert it into polynomial. So can we think of dynamic programming? To think about dynamic programming, we need to see whether this problem satisfies the overlapping subproblems property. So do we get overlapping subproblems property? What does that property say? If the same smaller problems are solved again and again in recursion, then that is called overlapping subproblem property. Your LCS of n minus 2, n minus 2 is called, and here also LCS of n minus 2, n minus 2 is called. So, we have got overlapping subproblems property. So, we can convert this problem into dynamic programming problem. Okay. So, how can we solve it using dynamic programming? Uh, let us use bottom up approach. Okay. So, we will fill up a dynamic programming table. Now, what would be the state or the structure of the table? Right. Uh, here we can get that from the recursion. In recursion, we are having two parameters uh, where the first parameter tells the string length to be considered of the first string and second parameter tells the string length to be considered from the second string. So, I can take a dynamic programming table dp of n plus 1 and n plus 1 size. Okay, because here I have uh, in recursion, I am passing these two parameters which I need to store. Okay. So, uh, like here, a uh, LCS of n minus 1, n minus 2 was denoting what? This recursive function. Longest common subsequence considering the first n minus 1 characters of the first string and n minus 2 characters of the second string. Similarly, dp of ij will denote what? Maximum longest common subsequence considering the first i characters of the first string and considering the first j characters of the second string. Okay, so dp of ij will denote this. Now we need to fill this table. So first of all, we need to fill base cases. So what I can say for i equals to 0 to n dp of i 0 is equals to dp of 0 i is equals to 0. Because if the length of the one string is considered as 0, there are no characters in it, it is an empty string, then no matter how many characters are there in the second string, my longest common subsequence will be 0, right? Because we are considering longest common subsequence between two strings. If one is empty, answer would be 0, right? Now we can fill the remaining table. So I can say for i equals to 1 to n for j equals to 1 to n if the i minus 1 if the ith character and jth character in the string uh, s and s1 are same then there will be one condition otherwise it would be another condition now ith character in string would be at index i minus 1 and jth character in string uh, would be at j minus 1 index okay so i can say uh, if s of i minus 1 is equals to is equals to s1 of j minus 1. If these two are same, then I can say dp of ij is equals to look here. If the two characters are same, then we decrease indexes of both and we say plus 1. Okay. So, dp of ij will be equal to dp of i minus 1 j minus 1 plus 1. Okay. Else, if these two are not same, then I can say dp of ij would be equal to, uh, look here, uh, this would be max of this and this, right? So, dp of ij would be equal to uh, max of dp of i minus 1 j, comma dp of i j minus 1, right? So, we will fill this table in this way and finally, we will return what? we will return dp of n n that is the length of the longest common subsequence considering the first n characters considering the full string of uh, first uh, string considering the full length of first string and considering the full length of second string so now this will give us the longest common subsequence okay this is not our answer this is the length of the longest common subsequence. Our answer is minimum characters to be deleted to form the remaining string of palindrome. So that would be n minus dp of n n. Okay. Now let's look at its actual code. 
so if we look at the actual code so i have taken n as the size of the string i have taken string s1 s1 is equal to s then i have reversed s1 i have taken one dp table i have initialized the base cases where length of either one string is zero then dp of zero comma i or i zero is zero then as i said in the explanation i have ran two for loops and if the ith character matches the jth character of s1 then dp of ij equals to dp of i minus 1 j minus 1 plus 1 else dp of ij equal to max of dp of i minus 1 j comma dp of i j minus 1 and then finally i will return n minus dp of n n where dp of n n will give me the length of the longest common subsequence between s and s1 where s1 is the reverse of s Hence, this uh, longest common subsequence between S and S1 is nothing but the longest palindromic subsequence in string S. And n minus length of the longest palindromic subsequence in string S will give me the number of characters, minimum number of characters to be deleted in order to make the resultant string a palindrome. What would be the time complexity? Time complexity would be big O of n cross n, where n is the length of the string because we are running here two for loops, one inside the other, right? And what would be the auxiliary space? The auxiliary space here would also be how much? Big O of uh, n cross n, right? Because we are uh, taking one string s which is occupying length of n and we are taking this dp table which is occupying length of n square. This is maximum, so auxiliary space will also be n square. Now let's submit this code. So let's submit it. So we have solved this question successfully. I hope you understood the solution completely. Thank you.